basically they told me I can't board and the reason that was given to me was I'm Ethiopian. In my opinion, it is not right for an airline to discriminate against someone because of their nationality without giving any clear reason and doing so rudely. In my opinion, it's wrong to have a random set of rules which you seem to apply when you feel like it. In my opinion, international airlines should treat people with professionalism, should do their best to treat people with dignity and overall provide customers with good experience. There is a right way to go about things and there is a wrong way to go about things. In my opinion, Kenya Airways, you are wrong for this. This is what happened to me. I was invited by YouTube for the YouTube Black Voices celebration, the 2022 class were graduating in South Africa, Cape Town. So naturally, I was excited and I began to plan my travel. Part of the requirement to go to South Africa to apply for visa is to have a valid passport. You need to complete a form, which is the application visa. You need to have payment with visa fee, which I paid over 10,000 shillings. You need to have yellow card. You need to have two colored passport photos and you also have to have air ticket and a hotel reservation as well as a bank statement for three months and an undertaking by the host in South Africa, a letter from them as well as their passport and a statement or documentation that proves why you're going there, like an invitation, right? So I gathered all the required things and applied for visa. The South African embassy approved the visa and told me, yes, you're welcome to our country. So on the day of departure, I get to the airport three hours in advance. I check in at the counter. I pass through the security checks. Um, I'm cleared. I go to the Kenya Airways check-in counter. I go to them and I give them my passport and my flight details. They see my ticket and they give me a boarding pass and they tell me go to this gate you know you know how it goes so i check in my luggage and go to the second security check everything is okay i pass by the immigration everything is okay so i have a lot of time so i even took breakfast and when it's time for my flight for boarding time i go to the last gate you're supposed to pass, which is the boarding gate, and I provide my boarding pass and my passport. They see my boarding pass, they see my passport, and they tell me, okay, all good. So I go and sit with other people that are supposed to go to South Africa. I join other people and I sit and I wait. A few minutes later, one of the Kenya Airways employee comes to me and she asked me, is this your first time going to South Africa? I told her, yeah, it is. And then she says, oh, I'm confused at this point. I'm looking at her like, okay, what's the, oh, okay. And she takes my passport and goes to the counter. I didn't think much of it, honestly speaking. I'm sitting, I'm waiting for her. A few minutes pass and she comes back to me and she asks me why are you going to South Africa I tell her there's a YouTube event and that's what I'm going there for to attend so she's like do you have the document that they have given you like the invitation letter I told her no that invitation letter I've given to the South African Embassy when they were giving me my visa so but I have the email from YouTube to show you why I'm going there. Would you like to see that? She said, yes. I showed it to her. She even took a picture of the invitation letter from YouTube and she left. So I'm sitting there wondering, okay, there's like only 20 minutes left to board. Like what is going on? Still unclear. She goes, takes a while. By this time, people are being called, the passengers are being called to board the flight. So I'm kind of like thinking my passport is not with me. She took it. So like what's happening? 
So as the people are queuing to go into the flight, because we're I, I told you we were at the boarding gate, she came she comes back and she tells me, um, unfortunately, since this is your first time, I don't think you will board this flight. I'm like, what what? What do you mean? What do you mean it's my first time so I can't go? I don't I don't understand. Look on my passport, it shows the South African embassy, which is an extension, the South African government, not an extension, that is the South African government. They said, we've given you a visa, we've seen, you met all the requirements, we've checked everything we need to check, and you can go. So why are you telling me you might not go? Why are you telling me this is your first time, so it's a problem? So she's like, yeah, I need to send the information, the invitation letter I have from you and your passport and send it to someone in South Africa to get a confirmation from them to clear you. I was like, okay, get it. It's fine. But people are boarding, so I don't want to miss my flight. Just get what you need to get. Fine. She goes, right? 10 minutes pass and nothing. And I, I'm only left with like 10 minutes till like the gate is going to be closed and I won't be able to go in when like I've checked in my bags, I have everything I need to have and I'm just there alone because everybody that was on the queue is just going in. You know, they're allowing them in except for me, I was told to sit. So at this point I start getting worried. Like I'm like, what is happening? So I walk to the counter because I'm like, there's no time. I go to the counter, there, was, there were three ladies, the one that was talking to me and the two of them that were at the counter. So the one on the left, I go closer to her and I'm like, hi, I explained to her what me and this uh, Kenyan employee were talking, Kenyan Airways employee were talking. So I'm like, so, you know, everybody's going in and you know, it's gonna close, so what, what do I do? And she's like, excuse me, go sit over there. And there are other people around and they're looking at us, so I felt uncomfortable the way I was being told, go sit over there, like, hey, I am a passenger, I am a customer. So I go and sit on the first row, because I'm like, okay, I don't want to go further, there's no time, let me just be close to them. And the lady that was I was talking to initially comes back, gives me my passport, my boarding pass, and tells me, I don't think you, you'll make it on this flight. I'm like, what do you mean you won't make it on this flight? I've booked, people are waiting for me over there to, you know, take me, like, I have visa, like, what, what, what do you mean I can't make it? The plane is right here, why wouldn't I make it? I have everything that I need. So this is when she tells me, you are Ethiopian. And honestly, I didn't understand what that, yes, I am Ethiopian, yes, I am carrying Ethiopian passport, like, it's not, when I was checking in, you knew I was Ethiopian. Like, what? I am Ethiopian. Of course I am Ethiopian. So she's like, yeah, so you won't be able to make it on this one. So maybe you'll book a flight for the next one, which goes after midnight. And I'm like, but why? Why am I being told not to board when I have everything? She tells me, you are Ethiopian. At this point, it's like five minutes um, till I get close. I'm just like really panicking. Um, I ask her, okay, you said you want to confirm. Is the person in South Africa like telling you or clearing you or approving this uh, so that I can go? She's like, unfortunately, it's a Sunday, so they might not get back to us. I'm like, what? So the person might not get back to us and you're telling me I'm gonna miss the flight. She's like, yes. And I'm like, I have to book another flight. She's like, yes. I asked her, is it gonna be, is there gonna be an extra charge for that? She's like, probably. I honestly, honestly, at this point, I thought it was a joke. I just, I, I thought it was a joke. And so she left. When she left, I went to the third lady that I haven't talked to. I told you there were two ladies just standing at the counter. So I'm trying to talk to her. I'm like, okay, let me talk to everyone. Maybe someone will come up with a solution because I don't understand why I'm there. So when I walked over to her and I'm about to talk to her, she looked at me and she said, next, as she's doing this, honestly, at that point, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I just walked back to the seat and sat because like, I didn't know well, what else to do because I'm not getting answers. I'm being told, you're Ethiopian. I'm like, okay, I'm Ethiopian. Uh-huh. But like, 
okay and then what do we do i'm ethiopian we've 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 um, made that clear we both understand i'm ethiopian but then what so basically they told me i can't board and the reason that was given to me was i'm ethiopian and this is my first time flying to south africa not other countries but just south africa so i was like okay so what do i do next she writes down on my boarding pass a number and she tells me call this number we will let you know when the person we're waiting for approval in south africa approves your travel basically i said okay i lost hope because i'm seeing like the gate is closed there's nothing i can do i was there three hours earlier but i was just sitting and watching everyone go in except for me i took that boarding pass and went out um, there's a whole thing because I checked in my bag I have to go through immigration wait for my bag to come um, from the plane because you know I've already checked in my bag that's a whole process on its own so I went to the duty manager I was told go and ask someone so that has power I go to the duty manager the duty manager is on brick his um the person that reports to him who was a, su a supervisor she tells me you can talk to me anything like i can tell him he's just on a break i was like okay i explained to her everything that's happening when i tell her she's like so confused she's like why why show me your visa i showed her my visa she saw everything and she's like why why are they rejecting you i'm like i have no idea there were kenya airways staff I'll even put on the video for you to see. I filmed a little bit of it. And I was like, they told me no. So she calls them up. And she asks them, like, what, what, why, why wasn't this girl allowed on the flight? They tell her something. Then she hangs up and she's like, oh, okay. They're telling me that you have been profiled. I'm like, okay, so like, what does that mean? She says, since you're Ethiopian and this is your first time traveling to South Africa, that's why they blocked your entrance from you know, you going into the aircraft and um, going to South Africa. And I was like, I don't understand. I've never heard about that. And clearly even her, she never heard about it because after she called them is when they told her. So I tell her everything that happened. I tell her the treatment I received and she's like, we'll take notes. I'm sorry you were treated this way. And she tells me, okay, next flight come. This is the number you called. She gave me the same number, the lady that the lady that at the counter gave me. So I said, thank you. And I leave. So YouTube booked another flight for me for the next, for the morning um, to go straight to Cape Town. Mind you, at this point, I still don't know if I'm able to go even on the second flight because I was never told anything like, this is the reason, come with this, come with that. This is because of... they just told me you're Ethiopian. So it's not like I can change the fact that I'm Ethiopian. So I just leave hoping that the number they gave me will work and the person that's in South Africa will approve. So I go home, I try calling the whole day. The flight was in the morning, as I told you. I don't know if I mentioned it, but it was in the morning. So the whole day we were calling, calling the number. It's not, they don't pick up or uh, they uh, like, it, it doesn't even ring. At some point we went through and when we started talking to them and we tell them, they're like, okay, uh, we will let you know, but you see the person that we need approval from um, might not be in because it's Sunday. So yeah, we're sorry. Call after 20, 30 minutes. Okay, we call 30 minutes later. No one picks up, one hour later, no one. To the point where they knew the number because we kept texting and calling, they started hanging up. You know how you know when someone hangs up on you, it rings, it rings, and then, you know, it, it tell the the company tells you oh, it's been um they're busy so they started hanging up hanging up now we started calling the customer service them they keep telling us there's no such thing we don't know such thing being turned away when you have visa we're like we're telling you this happened because we were turned away give us a reason tell us what to do next because at the end of the day if i was profiled tell me on what like what needs like when you profile they need to tell you what exactly you need to fix or like what the problem is no answer. Eventually after calling, maybe I'll put the screenshot here of how many times we tried to call them. Eventually, I guess we jammed their, their 
phone line they picked up and this time he says he's the duty manager we asked him like what is the reason why 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 did this happen to me and he just told us it's because i'm ethiopian no further detail no no nothing so we're like okay but we need answers like tomorrow what's my guarantee if i come back and you like as i said i won't change overnight i won't be another nationality i'll still be ethiopian so what's my guarantee that you will allow me in like is there anything you need do you need the invitation letter do you need to contact youtube do you need anything tell us so that we can provide it and tomorrow i come back and face the same thing so basically after a lot of back and forth he said okay you can come i'll put in notes here to tell them that when you come they should allow you in we said thank you we hanged up the next day it was not even the next day because the flight was like I needed to check in at 4 a.m. I barely slept. The same day, I had to go to the airport and hope that they would let me in. I go in and no problem whatsoever. They allowed me in. I boarded, went to South Africa, Cape Town, you know, and came back. I'm happy to report I'm back home. So I have a few questions for Kenya Airways. Number one at the point of checking in. Is it not possible for them to raise the red flag? Because as I'm checking in three hours in advance, they know I'm Ethiopian, they have seen my passport, they know everything they need to know about me. They couldn't have reached out to their mysterious approver in South Africa and check so that I don't waste time sitting there thinking that I'm gonna board that flight. I would think if you have a valid reason to deny Ethiopians from traveling using your airline to a destination for the first time, you should let them know in advance, at the very least, at the checking in counter. Question number two. When a passenger has gone through all the process of checking in, going through a security check and has presented all the required documents, and you are now denying them of boarding. Isn't the right thing to do to take your time to explain to them why exactly they are not allowed to board that aircraft? As you can imagine, this is a shocking thing to happen to you for any passenger, especially knowing that you have everything that they might need from you. You have all the requirements needed. And for the Kenya Airways staff to be rude, dismissive, casual, and treat me like I am a bother to them is unprofessional. Question number three. If profiling of Ethiopians is a standard practice for Kenya Airways, they should make it clear that for any Ethiopian traveling to any destination for the first time, even though you have met all the requirements, you might be denied to board the flight. This should be public and Ethiopians should be given the right to have this information so that they can make an informed decision and choose another airline. And by the way, this is not my first international flight. So yeah, question number four, why don't all your staff, Kenya Airways staff know that passengers that are flying out for the first time at any destination, Ethiopian passengers are not allowed to board, especially the supervisors, because most of the customer service people we talked to and the supervisors and the duty managers had no idea there is such a thing. Question number five, for an international airline, which operates every day of the week, 24 seven. Why do you have a mysterious approver that may or may not work on Sundays? Shouldn't you have a system in place that ensures that the necessary approvals are approved in due time as soon as possible? Question number six. If there is a valid reason for you to profile a passenger, shouldn't it be clear to them that one, why they are being profiled and two what they need to do or show to address any concerns unfortunately this was not the case for me question number seven which is my last question to kenya airways is it an airline's job 
to deny a passenger from boarding despite the country whose responsibility it is to admit or reject visitors having issued the person a visa, which in my mind is the final document you need in order for you to travel. I feel like I was treated very poorly by Kenya Airways and I would hope that it doesn't happen to anybody else. It was a horrible bad experience and for that reason I would like to ask Kenya Airways a few questions so that they give me answers, not just me, but other people that might consider to fly Kenya Airways. We need to have a clear policy on profiling and people flying for the first time to a destination. What is the policy there? And also communication with passengers, how you answer and address them and explain to them when they really, really need an answer from you because they chose to use your service. I will be more than happy and open to come back and do a follow-up video to, you know, tell you if Kenya Airways responds to allow their answers to have a platform the same way we came here and talked about the issues we have. I would like for them to have the platform to give their answers. So that being said, I promise to come back and do a follow-up if I get a response from Kenya Air.